Hey class, today we're looking at our last section of Unit 4, which is meiosis genetics heredity. Uh, the main focus here is going to be genetic disorders, which you've been doing some re a research project on during this unit, so you should be familiar with uh, the premise of some of those already. And then uh, explaining pattern, uh, patterns of inheritance that are sex-linked or polygenic, uh, which are two terms that are uh, uh, newer to you that we're going to have to cover here. So to start off, we're looking at polygenic first. A polygenic just involves poly means many, uh, genic is gene, so it's just talking about two or more genes or many genes impacting the expression of one trait. A uh, classic example of this would be skin color. This is determined by alleles at several different genes um, and genes that create this protein called melanin. Um, some of us have more melanin, which makes us darker, or less that makes us lighter. But essentially the melanin is the thing that produces those shades of brown uh, that make up skin color. So two or more genes are responsible for uh, impacting that, leading to ultimately the skin color that is expressed uh, by us. An interesting note is that all of us have the same number of cells that make melanin. Those melanocytes are cells that make melanin. Uh, some just make more or less, but otherwise we're all exactly the same with cell number. Uh, the next thing we're looking at is sex-linked inheritance. Uh, this is the last of the uh, the kind of special Punnett squares we need to know how to do. It looks a lot like a monohybrid, except what we're really looking at is traits that are only uh, linked to X or Y chromosomes. That's what we mean by sex-linked. Uh, there are some kind of trait that's attached to the sex chromosome. It doesn't necessarily have to be with um, a sex characteristic, but it is on that one of those chromosomes. Uh, there are certain traits controlled by genes located on those sex chromosomes. A couple that we look at here is going to be uh, red, green color blindness and uh, male pattern baldness. Those are two uh, uh, that we're going to talk about here. So for a sex-linked inheritance Punnett square setup, it's similar to like when we use codominance and incomplete dominance. We use the, the superscript, uh, the, the, the superscript up here. Uh, the reason we do that is we can distinguish the male and the female better this way. We can show if it's linked to the X or the Y chromosome uh, more efficiently this way too. Uh, so hemophilia is an example that we're looking at. It's X-linked recessive disease. Uh, we're doing this square with a father that does not have hemophilia, so his genotype is there. We wrote him there. And a mother who is a carrier. Remember, a carrier is somebody that is also heterozygous. Um, so that's another way to say that too. When we say carrier, remember it's heterozygous. Uh, that's important uh, vocab that we need to know. So in this case, the female, we always write XX for the female, XY for the male. Every single time we do a sex link trait, uh, that's what we're doing. What we do next is we take the, uh, the trait. So if a, if a father does not have hemophilia and it's a recessive trait, then we give him a capital H because that's the normal gene uh, or the normal allele that's located there. On the Y, he gets nothing. Uh, this is an X-linked recessive trait. So this is a Y chromosome over here. There's our Y chromosome. Uh, it can't have an allele for hemophilia. The mother has two X chromosomes. It's X-linked. So one X chromosome has one allele, in this case the normal allele, and this one is the hemophilia allele, uh, the lowercase one. So she's a carrier. So now we go through and complete our square. We have X, X. Let me come down again. Here's another X, another X. This would be X and Y, and this is X and Y. All right, uh, hopefully you can see right now it's a 50-50 chance of having a boy, 50-50 chance of having a girl. Uh, now we go through and plug in those alleles appropriately. So bring the big H down, big H over. We'll go to the next one, big H down, little h over. Same thing, we can write our recessive allele uh, second. Uh, this one, we gotta look for our X, carries the big H here, and our X carries a small h here. All right, so looking at this, we're determining possible genotypes and phenotypes. Uh, possible genotypes of offspring for females. Uh, we can have a female that is X with big H on both of them, so homozygous 
dominant uh, individual, we can have a female that is heterozygous be created from this cross. We can also have then a male, a male that is uh, not, a, not affected with hemophilia there. And then we can have a male with hemophilia here. So uh, men are more likely to get X-linked disorders or, or show X-linked disorders because of this fact here. They only have one X chromosome, so if they get one bad copy or one copy of the chromosome with that allele, they got the disorder. This individual here, this female, has a bad copy, but there's also a good copy that's dominant and covers it up. Um, men have one X chromosome, there's something wrong with it, uh, then that trait can be expressed more easily. Phenotypes need to be written out um, as well. So as far as phenotypes go, uh, we could just say that there's a female, we'll say female, uh, a normal female, we'll just say it that way, normal female. And then uh, we could have a uh, normal male or uh, hemophilia in the male as well. All right, so there are three phenotypes shown here. There's normal female, a normal male, and a hemophilia um, male. Uh, the next thing we're talking about real quick is mutations. The idea that mutations can lead to these genetic disorders is nothing new. We've talked about that all through our DNA unit. Uh, so we're going to spend very little time uh, on this slide, but this is really a lot of this should be review. Um, in addition to errors in meiosis, where chromosomes don't separate properly, we also talk about DNA mutations. And the idea that DNA mutations can lead to uh, changes in the sequence that affect proteins being made, which can lead to uh, disorders being expressed. Um, so this can happen all kinds of things. Deletion is one that you should be looking for, especially in the thing you were researching in genetic disorders. Deletion could be the reason. We could have um, duplication of bases or repeats. We could have point mutations, so some bases just changing in specific places. Um, new bases being inserted, so um, other sequences being added in to our DNA. Um, mutations can cause all these things. Again, this is review. Genetic diseases, cancer, new genetic traits, or sometimes they don't impact anything at all. Here's a couple examples of genetic disorders that are a result of different types of mutations or other problems that exist. So colorblindness, point mutation, this is sex length like we talked about, so it's on the X chromosome. Uh, cystic fibrosis, point mutation, we talked about that actually in class about how um, it's just a small, small change in the genetic code uh, on chromosome 7 that leads to this disorder and the issue of certain proteins being formed. Uh, Down syndrome is an extra chromosome, uh, 21 typically, uh, that happens. Point mutation on the X here, uh, again, another sex-linked one, and then sickle cell happens on uh, chromosome 11, and uh, is also a point mutation. 